something is touching you in a caring and gentle way, we usually associate that with something that is living. But what if I tell you that is a robot? This happened to me several years ago when I was making a robot for a class. The objective was moving and sensing. Me, my robotic cat. I programmed this robot to find me and snuggle around my feet, like a real cat would do. But while it was snuggling my feet, it felt like it felt like it's alive and tried to get my attention. It was strange because I constructed this robot from scratch, and I know its mechanism and algorithm. I shouldn't have any attachment for it. I started to look into what that complicated feeling is. And as it turns out, some philosopher called this mental commitment or mental projection. It is our human nature to project humanities onto things, seeing faces and objects. This kind of behavior might seem playful or silly, but I see a design opportunity to explore. I use the term robotic intimacy technology to describe what I make. I do this to instigate comfort versus discomfort, sincerity versus insincerity, and real versus Virtual. Most of my work are serious, funny, and sometimes dark, and fictional, based on my personal encounters. For example, I took the conventional gesture of comforting someone and programmed that into a robot to show how meaningful and meaningless the patting gesture can be, through mental projection and repetition. Met my OK therapist. When someone is depressed, we are most likely to pat them on their shoulder and saying something like, "Everything's going to be okay," or "I'm sorry to hear that." But do we really mean it, or are we just saying it? What is intimacy when it's expected of you? Is the robot more honest in this case? This gave me the idea of re-examining old social conventions, parsing them and turning them to turning them into scripts for robots. Things such as hug, small talk, or clapping to show someone support. In some contexts, the robot intimacy technology might be superior to human because there are no humans involved. Therefore, there is no social pressure. You don't need to think about whether the person is sincere or insincere, or feel like someone is judging you. As comedian and writer Larry David said, every social situation is a potential nightmare. Like right now, speaking in front of 400 people and the click and not working, I had to think about: Am I doing okay? Am I making enough eye contact? But what is intimacy without all the associated risks? This is why, in preparation for this talk, I made this TEDx audience simulator. Here's another example. I recreate the sensation of teen spirit with four robotic arms. Me, my teen spirit generator. Teen spirit generator activated. Please hold your position while I generate teen spirit. Go team. Go team. Go team. Go team. Go team. Please put your arm up in the air. Please put your arm up in the air. <laughs> I came up with this idea while I was working, while I was interning at a large company. They had this very, very systematic structure for creating collaboration and teamwork. It felt very inorganic to me, but the system did work. This is similar to my Teen Spirit generator, where the robot directs you to generate Teen Spirit. Performing the ritual with the robot might seem a little awkward at first for most people, but many of them admit that they get a sense of Teen Spirit after they use it. A lot of the machines that we use today are designed to re replace humans. Things like automatic checkout machines, self-driving cars, or Apple Siri. We manage to make them user-friendly and less awkward by methods like. 
human-centered design or user experience research. This got me thinking, why is the most extreme case of human robot replacement? Why is it like to replace human intimacy when we need it the most? So I came up with the last moment robot. It's a robot that cares for you and guides you pro through the process of dying. When I was designing this device, I was thinking about my grandmother. She lived 8,000 miles away. What if I couldn't see her for the last time? I was thinking about this robot could be an extension of myself, helping her and comforting her. Thinking about my grandmother also led me to create the nostalgic touch machine. This is a machine that can record hand gestures of our loved ones and play them back. I recorded my grandmother's gesture while she was alive, but after she passed away two months ago, I could not bring myself to use a machine because it's either going to feel too real to me or it's not gonna, the robot's not going to be able to replicate her gesture. Going back to the last moment robot, there was this interesting moment where I was playing a doctor in this installation, and someone pointed out that the robot is actually more humane than I am because I was treating the individual patients as if I want to get them in and out of the hospital. Sounds familiar? <laughs> While the device revealed the lack of human support, for a dying person, in some sense, the robot is empowering the individual, helping them, helping them through a difficult time. After the work went viral on the internet, I started to get email like this one. People wanted to know if it's available for purchase. It was very surprising to me that people want to buy this device. I didn't know what I was supposed to do. Is having this better than nothing? If I were to sell the robot, I could be encouraging people to die alone. And if I don't sell the robot, people could be suffering from dying by themselves. Maybe the solution is that people should just make their own robots. Based on the idea of do-it-yourself or self-help books, I create a series of robotic construction kits that people would assemble. I call this Making Friends by Making Them. Me, friend one. <laughs> friend one comforts you while you work. Friend two sits on your shoulder and gently touches you. <laughs> Friend three maintains a constant eye contact with you. Friend four vibrates when you pat them. <laughs> Friend five holds your hand. I attempt to extract things that we seek in a friendship. For example, someone that cares for us, someone that understands us, someone listens to us, someone pays attention to us.
people could construct and program their own robot to experience the complicated pleasure of being comforted by their own creation. I had this experience of my voice wasn't being heard or understood or acknowledged in both workplace and school. This, this experience inspired me to create these robots to empower myself and regain my self-confidence. And to add a little dark humor, I was calling this series of robots, I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> With these devices, you can upload your own sound so you can hear what you want to hear. You can also program how you want to be touched. There are reasons for my simplistic approach in terms of form and function. We often describe high-tech devices as sexy and slick. And I want to find out how much I can push our imagination to project intimacy. To test this, I created the cardboard frame. The cardboard frame is a modular robotic construction kit made with cardboard, motors, and simple circuits. It does take some effort for people to project human qualities to it, but once the robot starts to move, people see it as an adorable animal. From making so many robots, at one point I realized, while I designed the robot to comfort other people, it is also a way for me to reach out and connect with others. For instance, my grandmother. We all want to be heard, understood, and acknowledged. The technology of the future can probably do that for us, creating a sense of intimacy for us. However, we have to ask ourselves, what is intimacy without humanity? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>